Hi everybody, Sean Hayes here with JohnAmerica.com, here for our next lesson in pinhole photography. It's been a while since we've done one of these, so welcome back everybody. Today I'd like to show you a camera that I've built that allows you to use regular old 35mm film. You don't have to change the film cartridge in any way so that you can take it to the one hour photo place and get it developed anywhere that does one hour processing or overnight processing, whatever you'd like but it makes it really easy to do film based pinhole photography without having a dark, dark room. So, here it is. Doesn't look like much right now, but the real key is what's inside. Open this guy up, I'll let you have a look at it right here. If you can see inside of there, that is the entire mechanism. So if we look right here, this is the inside of a 35 millimeter film roll. Go to any one hour place, they will give you those by the handful, they just throw those bad boys away. And I've taken, and I've taken some bolts, and I've made it so that I can rotate it and put a little slot right in it right here so you can f feed the liter of the film into that. Now, this side is where all the magic happens. You see this bolt in here? What I've done is I've taken and I have carefully filed it down to be like that and that will fit in the little cog on the top of the film canister roll and then this screw right here comes out you undo this and you slide the film in there and then you tighten that bad boy up and it will hold it right in place like a regular camera will. And then up top here I've got it so that you have an advance knob and approximately one turn is an appropriate frame and then I have so that you can rewind it. I've just put a little arrow with some marker on there so I know which way to turn that. Now, on the inside here, here there's a few important things to think about. Is I've done, I've got two, I've got two bars here that extend completely into the, the front of the camera. So that this is a completely light proof compartment from this compartment and from this compartment. So you can see again see the entire camera and then here's the shutter I think this is pretty clever just moves up pinholes in there just like that lift it up count close it down now with this one I use pinhole designer and this particular camera is 59 millimeters and I went and I got a laser cut pinhole you can get those from Oxford Laser. There's a link to it on my website. And this particular one is 348 microns, or to regular people, 0 0.0348 millimeters, or 0.348 millimeters, excuse me. And it gives us an F of 170. So, this is half your battle. And on these, these sides of this compartment, put some felt, or I took the little fuzzy stuff from the, the edge of the film canister, right where the film goes in and out. That worked real well. But the back is very important. Let me show you this. This back, if you notice, has a little piece right there that sticks up. You'll notice it steps in. It steps in all the way around. If you notice on the camera, there's a lip all the way around that this fits snugly into. Can't move around and use more of that trusty Velcro. You know I like Velcro, folks, to keep that stuck down. But what's important with this is this extra added piece right here. This piece that I added right here makes a huge difference because that piece protrudes a little further in to where the film goes 
and keeps the film canister from wanting to rotate. Because the film canister will rotate on itself and wrap the film around the outside of it when you rewind it without this little guy to stop that little guy to stop that from happening. Now, I know we're not doing an in-depth build this time. I just wanted to show you how that goes together. That is a uh, fairly tricky guy to build here, but I know you can do it. You guys have been able to do every one of the other builds that I've shown you. I know you can handle this. But I will show you a couple other things. Is you know I'm using wing nuts and just regular old bolts here. The bolts, you can't see them inside of there real well. I'll try to show them to you better. I have rounded the edges off just a little so that it'll spin inside of there. I've also, the center of this hole is centered on one inch from the side, one inch from the back. That's a good dimension there. The dimensions here, I'll let you play with those a little. You'll find what works best. Just measure real carefully and measure real carefully here that this is 35 millimeters wide and you'll be fine there. Now on the bottom I've taken a piece of this no slip stuff that you put in a drawer that helps keep the camera from wiggling around on the tripod and I've got a quarter inch by 20 thread bolt that I've embedded in there that I've glued in there that will accept any that's the regular tripod thread and then for this little bolt, I've used this, and this will come all the way out. Let me show you. And I glued a T nut into there. And of course, anybody that's watched any of my cameras, you start to notice I like this little viewfinder that I take and build onto the top. You know, with pinhole photography, you never quite know what you're going to get, but it's at least good to have something to help you kind of get an idea of what you're going to get. And then I've also, on the back, covered this with felt. That'll prevent any light from getting in there. Very important. Now you'll see I've kind of got this blocky handle guy on here. You don't need that. That was actually part of an experiment for how I was going to keep it closed that wound up failing but makes kind of a nice handle. You don't need it, but you can put it on if you want. Okay, if you get real adventurous and want to build something really cool to impress your friends, check this guy out. That's right, Bellows. You saw that. Look on my website, I've got several links to some good information about how to build Bellows. Again, I'm not doing a full build this time, I'm really sorry, but this camera's really complicated and I don't think I could show it to you in a YouTube video. But, same idea, built a rail. The camera portion is exactly the same as this, just with bellows on the front. Just use the wing nut and the bolt so you can change your focal length and get different uh, and that that actually will act a little bit like a zoom lens. Now I have discovered with this camera, this was a bit of an experiment, that really to get a real zoom effect you'd need probably a camera well that long and you would only really get to see a difference between the very furthest and the very closest in. But I still think this camera is really fun and what I do like about it is even though you don't see a lot of difference in your angle of view, what you do see a difference in is your f-stop and I've got I've got them all marked out here and you know the documentation you can print out for your reciprocity data from Pinhole Designer, I printed out a whole stack of those for each different spot that I marked on here that I can place it at and what you can find is if you want to do longer or shorter exposures to do cool things with cool ghosting by standing in front of it for a minute and moving and getting a cool ghosting effect, this camera lets you do that. So if you want to move it out, get really lengthen up that exposure time, you can do that or shrink it down 
speed up that exposure time. Is this camera very accurate, very predictable. However, in full sunlight, with it only being 59 millimeters and only 170 f, can be kind of quick. You know, I see times of quarter second times. And by getting quarter second times, you don't get the depth of field that you will by letting that puppy sit for a minute, two minutes, etc. So, some fun things to think about with pinhole photography. I hope you're out doing it. I really love this stuff. I hope you can love it too. And, well, here it is. This is my baby right here. 35 millimeter pinhole. You can do it too. This is Sean Hayes signing off with Sean America Audio and Visual. Happy Pinhole. <laughs>